I'm Elliot Forrest from WQXR and welcome again to another artist check-in and joining me now is Hershey Felder. Good to see you. It's really nice to see you as well. You look fabulous, by the way. You, you know, for a COVID kind of situation, you've gotten really skinny, man. Oh, well, th thanks for saying so. I was trying not to put on the COVID-19. I was trying to take off the COVID-19. Yeah. I should tell people you, uh, we're talking, you're in Florence, Italy right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just first, right at the bat, tell people that you are going to be doing a show on July 12th as Beethoven. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, you have been Tchaikovsky and Liszt and Irving Berlin and Leonard Bernstein, you do these amazing one-person shows in which you, you act and you sing and you play the piano and you really b bring these personalities to life. And on July 12th, and we'll put the website down below so people sure. can get it, you're, you're going to be Beethoven. But you're in Italy right now, which was the epicenter uh, of the beginning of this pandemic. How, how are things, how are you and how are things there? Uh, it was rough at the beginning. I, I got home to actually rehearse because we live here now. And uh, up until this year, I think uh, I have not been able to spend more than three weeks straight at home and usually not more than six weeks all year. I've been on stage that much. It's 26, 28 years on stage, something like that. So this has been a bit of a very strange gift to be at home while, um, while the world is suffering so much, but it's the first time I've experienced this. Anyway, I came home to rehearse just at the height of this. And because it started here, people here are still taking it very, very seriously. Masks are mandatory everywhere. Um, and yes, people like everywhere, some don't want to wear them, but most do and most will. But you know, it's a very family oriented country. So when so many people die and so quickly, I think it was a very great shock. Um, one of the great traditions in Italy is kissing people on both cheeks when you see them. And that's not done now. And it's quite sad when it's not, because if you're with somebody, you kind of wave, you kind of say hello, but you don't, yeah. you yeah. don't hug, you don't kiss. And I think people miss that. Yeah. Um, it's going to it's gonna be a while. That's going to change. You know, people are going to have to do without that for a while. Let's talk about your Beethoven play. I should tell people that I saw a little bit of your Irving Berlin from Florence. And if people are getting somewhat used to these little Zoom boxes for plays or readings and uh, a, a different kind of online experience, you've created a very high level of technology, both in the camera quality and the way you use projections and uh, mm -hmm. overlays, and, and of course the audio in the show itself. Uh, I'm guessing the Beethoven will be just as high an experience? Uh, we're pushing it even further this time. You know, the Irving Berlin takes place in one location, which is in his living room. That's where the play takes place. So I was able to, uh, to do that on location. Beethoven takes place in a half a dozen places. Um, the good news is, is that Italy is old, so you know where I am looks a lot like Vienna would have looked 250 years ago. And um, is so we're able to play that, but we have a lot of running around <laughs> in order to make this happen. In fact, it takes place, it starts in Waringer Cemetery where Beethoven was first buried. So we actually had to create a uh, a complete cemetery in order for this to work with a complete tombstone of Beethoven, exactly the way it looks in Vienna. And I am so proud to say that we're just finished building today and it looks exactly like it did in Vienna. Wow. Um, so as I've been talking about it to friends, I say, what are you up to? Well, I'm hanging out with Beethoven in my front yard. And it's true, in one of the yards is this big tombstone of Beethoven sitting there. In Italy, it's not so weird. All kinds of people are buried in the yard, but, um, this has been fun. And so, you know, the crew is, has to be twice as big this time because we have locations to get to. Um, we have to and run. are you moving around? Are you? Oh, yes. I'm, it's I'm it's all live, right? It's live. Well, the, this one we're mixing live and pre-shot. The narration, as you see, the story is happening live. But there are memory things where Gerhard von Breuning, who right, talks about Beethoven, is remembering what happened when Beethoven certain things happen so certain things we are pre-shooting I mean the, the same day but we have to shoot them in the afternoon so then when we go live at night we can interplay as he's playing live you know memories so he's voiceovering live while certain memories are coming up that are pre-recorded it's so crazy but it's so much fun 
I was going to say, you could pre-record the whole thing, and I don't think anyone would fault you for it, but this is what you like to do. I don't know if I like to do it so much as if I said, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I, it's just totally crazy. Um, it's totally off the wall, but you know what? It gives that intimate experience that's immediate. And you're a brilliant pianist. Every show I've seen, you've, you've sat down at the piano. You, I'm guessing you play Beethoven. Oh, yeah, a lot. Um, I got hear. Beethoven, and we, we were going to hear, uh, uh, we hear the Pathetic Sonata because, well, we, we hear things that um, Gerhardt, the boy, um, remembers hearing and moved him. So we hear the Pathetic Sonata largely because it was so impressive in that it was quite new, but it was also the very first that Beethoven composed when he was beginning to be aware of the hearing loss, you know? So there was an awareness something was wrong and it seemed to be coming out in the Pathetic Sonata. And if you look at the trajectory of the sonatas, it really is the first time you have that kind of chordal representation, that first chord that it starts with, with the notes, they're smashed together and it, there's nothing pretty about it. It's the first time it doesn't sort of have a balance that we're used to. It's very weird. And we hear bits of the Emperor Concerto, you know, which I play, sometimes both parts. And then we hear the entire first movement of the Fifth Symphony in the Liszt reduction, which you have to be crazy to play because it's so physically awkward, but I do. And we hear the very original Fiorelis, and people don't know this, but Fiorelis was not at all known in Beethoven's time. Fiorelis was only discovered 40 years after he died. Wow. In Munich. Nobody, people don't know that it's so famous. People don't know that nobody knew it in his time. It was found in Munich in, in his hand. Then uh, we have the first variations that Beethoven wrote, his very first composition when he was 11 years old. And we have, uh, that's quite a bit already. I've given you quite a bit of, of stuff. That's good. We'll, we'll let the people, we'll let the people. So uh, just quickly, the last thing that you did mm -hmm. on Berlin, you were raising money for the theaters you might have been in because as we well, know. Some I had been in, some I might have been, you know, various right. ways, people I'd worked with, yeah. Right, and and um, and is this a similar thing? Or, or, or here, we, here we've added more. Here, there we had... 13 organizations, this time we have 19. Um, and I think with each, with each one, perhaps we'll have more. And the idea is to offer them this to their patrons and where they get to make a significant amount of money from selling to their patrons. So each theater handles their own sales. And I'm sort of the, uh, uh, how do you say, the, the um, uh, clearing house for the, uh, for the material. And, and we broadcast, but each theater handles their sales. And, you know, we did very well last time for the theaters, and I'm hoping we're going to do even better this time for the theaters because these buildings, they have to stay open and they have oh, to stay no. open with people. And we have to somehow manage to, to get to the end of this, at the end of this tunnel. You know, we have to get there and it's going to be hard. And in the meantime, it's not just about here, give me some money. You know, I need to run a theater, so to speak. But uh, this is also about trying to help as much as I can um, by giving product, by doing what we would ordinarily do anyway. Right. And, and then, you know, advancing my own sense of technology and how we can do this better and better each time. So I partner with some really great guys to do it. Well, people. Well, you always do a really beautiful job. Uh, people can find out at hersheyfelder.net, uh, Sunday, July 12th, live. I mean, there's a certain sense of, of uh, you know, theatricality just about that. It's lunatic. But there's something fun where everybody's kind of hanging on what's going to go wrong, what's going to happen. And you know what? That's okay, too. So it makes it, it gives it a sense of, of um, event theater. And I think that was important. Hershey Felder, good to see you. I look forward to seeing you in person and on stage when this whole wacky COVID thing is over. I so admire everything you do. Thanks, man. You look great, and it's so good to see you, and I hope to see you live in person very soon again. Me too. Yeah, lots of love, man. Take care.